done anything that big before. Including me. But first, I'd like to visit uh, an old friend of mine in the audience. Or maybe I should say a young friend. Excuse me. I'm still trying to figure out how a rabbit gets pulled out of a top hat, and this young man is going to make a seven-ton jet airplane disappear. Of course, the explanation is simple. It's magic. Earlier in the show, I did an illusion with a bunch of kids, and one of them has become a big fan of magic. This is Joe. Hi. You've become pretty good friends, right? Right. And friends would do anything for each other, right? Right. So if I asked you to move to another seat so I could sit next to that pretty girl over there, you'd do it, right? Wrong. <laughs> oh, come on. No way, Jose. Find your own date. <laughs> okay. And it says that the star of the movie Tie Next. I'm really excited. Please welcome Miss Bo Derek. <laughs> Bo Derek's not here. Star of the movie Tarzan. Must be Richard Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Richie. It's not Richard. Richard Harris. Well, who's the star of the movie Tarzan? I'm going to need you to jump up here on the stool, OK? Good. It's very easy. Come here. Just jump. Jump right up there. That's it. Just jump. A little higher. Let me just show you here. Stand like this. Stand right there. Just watch me. Watch, okay? Just jump up here. That's funny. That's funny. Come on. Come on. Get up on the stool here. I'll hold it for you. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is CJ. <laughs> it's not going to have you on my show. Uh, I'd like to shake your hand. That's close enough. Uh, CJ, confidentially, uh, mammal to mammal, what was it like uh, working with, with Bo Derek? That good, huh? <laughs> I got something great, too. How'd you like to see a card trick? I thought you would. But before I show you the card trick, I'd like to dazzle this audience with some expert card manipulation. These card fans took 15 years of Cards go up the sleeve, stop them. Let's get right to the trick. CJ, I made a prediction. And believe it or not, the card that you select will match my prediction. OK? No. OK, CJ, I'm going to need you to pick a card. Come on, pick a card. It's easy, guys. Just take one. That's it. Take a card. That's it. Now just show it to the camera. Right, I don't want to see it. You could have picked any of these other cards. Now hold on to it. I'm going to need you to look, to look at that card closely. All right? Oh, no problem. Come here. Put these on. Have you done this before? You have? 
me you're gonna do it again. I'm gonna take the card without looking at it and place it in my pocket here. Now, CJ, what would you say if the card that you selected matches my prediction? <laughs> Everybody's a critic. <laughs> CJ, I need your help. I need you to really concentrate on your card. Really think hard. Really think. Think really hard. <laughs> That's enough thinking. CJ, see that picture over there? Watch. Isn't that great? No? You trying to tell me that's not your card? It is your card. It's not your card. It's not the eight of diamonds. It's the four of diamonds. How am I going to get out of this one? Very funny, very funny. CJ, I'd like to remind you this is my show. <laughs> Who show do you think it is? <laughs> you're, you're probably right. CJ, see the card over there? Watch the diamonds. You, you, know that? You're super. you know I have a hot tub. <laughs> about to see is the culmination of a year's planning, experimentation, and rehearsal. And in all that time, David has yet to complete one successful run-through. Adverse weather conditions, including strong airport winds, have constantly hindered his attempts. The entire illusion has been completely revamped in the past week, and what you will see tonight has never been completely tested. David Copperfield is going to try to make a seven-ton jet disappear. Because of the magnitude of the illusion and the uncertainty of its success, what we are about to see is one of the great moments in the history of magic. Never before has anyone tried to make anything this big disappear. Time now for the biggest challenge ever faced by the magic of David Copperfield. and I'm at an airport right outside our studios. Now, the reason I'm at an airport is because the size of our next illusion would be impossible to perform indoors. Now, I want to remind all of you that everything you see tonight is exactly the way you would see it if you were standing right here with me. Now, what you see behind me is a 10-foot-high scaffolding. This will form into an enclosure of three walls. The fourth wall is made of cloth, and it's lying on the runway right out there in front, ready to be raised into position. Now I'd like to throw it to Sammy Jackson so he could tell us a little bit about the plane itself. Sammy? Thank you very much, Susan. As Jason mentioned earlier, this is the largest object that anyone has ever attempted to vanish. The weight is an incredible seven ton, and the price is equally incredible, over $2 million. In addition to this wall, the plane will be surrounded by a human chain. 50 spectators linked together, making the disappearance of this plane, in my opinion, virtually impossible. There you can see them now, taking their position right around the plane. <laughs> That switch is a new addition. It controls the lights at the back of the enclosure. When the translucent front wall is up, it will backlight the plane and the people surrounding it. Casting their silhouettes on the translucent front wall so that we can see the plane right up until the moment that it vanishes. 
I'm sure everyone has a few questions regarding the surroundings or even the airplane itself. So we've invited the vice president of Gates Learjet Corporation, Jim Greenwood, and also the owner of this particular aircraft, Mr. Clay Lacey. Hi, gentlemen. Good evening. First of all, Jim, has this airplane been tampered with in any way? Absolutely not. So it is a genuine aircraft. It's uh, completely operational, Sammy, in every way. Except for one thing. What's that? I've drained all the fuel. He couldn't even fly this aircraft out. Gentlemen, I'm here with Airport Maintenance Supervisor Dick Waters. And I, Dick, I have a few questions for you. Uh, this runway that you and I and, of course, the plane are on, now, it doesn't open up or have any elevators? No, that's correct. This is a solid sheet of asphalt, and it has a Conrock base. OK. Uh, the plane can't go up, can't go down, right? That's correct. OK. And it is completely out in the open with 100 feet around it in all directions? Correct. OK. Okay, thank you. Straps are being attached to the plane now to lock it into place. The spectators are being blindfolded for a very obvious reason, to protect this, the mystery of the world's biggest and most expensive illusion. Now, I'd like to remind all of you that David's magic is performed with absolutely no camera tricks. The illusion that you are watching right now at home is exactly the way he is doing it now. Ladies and gentlemen, David Copperfield. Now, there, there were no camera tricks. The illusion was actually performed right here. I couldn't believe it. If I'm sitting at home, I could think of some way to get out of it. But <laughs> I was right here, and there's no way that plane could have left. <laughs> well, it did. Ma'am, was that plane here just it a moment sure ago? It was. What happened to it? Uh, it disappeared. What about you, sir? It's, it's just amazing. What happened to the airplane? I don't know. It went. <laughs> it went. What did you feel? It was thrilling. It was shocking. You had chills. What did you think when you when they, they dropped and you took down your blindfold and it was gone? It was incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I'd also like you to thank my guests, 
Jason Robards, Susan Anton, Audrey Landers, Catherine Bach, the paintings of Patrick Nagel, and uh, you too, CJ. Now tell me, wasn't I more fun to work with than Bo Derek? <laughs> Appearing in tonight's cast, Maury Boyan, Robert Daly, Lynn Eric, Susan Carr George, Andre Gower, Joel Graves, Sammy Jackson, Sarah Miles, Eric Orson, Leota Richards, and musical arrangements by Sid Fett.